Back in September of last year, me and Cherry Cherry were in Orlando, Florida. During our stay, we squeezed in two visits to Disney Quest, located in the downtown Disney area of Walt Disney World. It's a multi-floor indoor theme park that opened in 1998, very much like what the sadly departed Sega World in London was like. Unfortunately, some of the interactive rides are starting to show their age a bit, such as the virtual reality Aladdin game complete with heavy, uncomfortable VR headsets, and a Pirates of the Caribbean canon shooting game which was made long before the famous movie series, and it shows. The best ride here by miles is Cyberspace Mountain. It lets you design a virtual roller coaster which you can then ride on a machine that spins you about with a large screen in front of you. As far as the rides go, this place could do with a bit of an update is all. But we're here to talk about how arcade perfect this place is, and that's one area where Disney Quest still shines as one of the biggest and best arcades I've been to yet. For starters, you pay an entry fee to get in, but all the games are free to play. This is an excellent idea that arcades are only just now starting to try out, such as the Heart of Gaming in London and Astro City in Southend with its all-nighter lock-ins. Considering how much play these machines get, they seem to be very well looked after too, with barely a knackered stick, screen or reel in sight. In fact, the only game I did see out of order on my first visit was repaired by the time we returned to it less than a week later, so they must really keep on top of the maintenance here, which is great to see, and trust me, there are a lot of games here. Of the five floors contained within, the majority of the floor space is filled to the brim with machines both old and new, famous and rare. They clearly make sure to get a lot of the latest arcade games in, but you also discover some real gems in this place that are probably very difficult to find elsewhere, especially the one we discovered as we first entered the building. Just as you walk in, look, it's Wreck-It Ralph. I've got a wreck it, etc. And, uh, oh my god, they have... They have Fix It, Feel It Junior machines, like lots of them. That actual, oh wow. That's right, actual Fix It, Feel It Junior cabinets. These were made in very small numbers by Disney purely for promotional purposes during the release of the movie Wreck-It Ralph. And as far as I know, we're not for sale at all outside of the odd auction. This might be one of the only places to find this machine now, let alone seven of them in a row. These are lovingly crafted to look like they've been around since the 1980s with Donkey Kong like artwork, tinny speakers and fake wear and tear and they've been built with quality sticks and buttons you'd expect from an old classic. The machine doesn't even have Disney's name anywhere on it, instead all copyrights and logos are of a fictional game company called Toby Komi. If you've seen the movie or played the web-based versions of the game, you'll know what to expect. As Felix, you have to jump from window to window, repairing all the wrecking that Ralph has, uh, wrecked. Oh, he got you. While doing this, you must also avoid bricks being dropped down by the giant fisted bloke. Yeah, you can get this. Oy. Nice one. Everything from the game within the movie is present such as the opening that shows why Ralph is so grumpy in the first place, and the stage completion scene where Felix is given a massive medal and a pie. This is such a convincing cabinet, I wouldn't be surprised if some kids believe this is actually as old as they want you to think it is. Very clever, Disney. Very clever. Oh, oh he killed you. Fished in pieces. Oh, he's got a little flower and everything. Game over. Even the machines that would normally be ticket redemption games are free to play. They obviously don't spit out tickets in this case, but this is a good place to practice up on them. Normally the luck based nature of these games mean they drain your wallet, but here we can truly test out just how cheeky these machines can be. For example, Flaming Finger. Created by Namco in 2003, this touchscreen based LED light game pumps out funky electronica music every time you play and the premise is simple, navigate the maze with your finger without overshooting the corners and make it to the end on time. At least, it's simple on paper, but not so much in execution. Apologies in advance for the film by the way. Oh, it's harsh. Very strict time. The music's amazing. <laughs> this is really harsh. Get a boom bar. Oh, come on. Oh, I want to beat one. 
I want to beat one. Get your flame on. Burn it up. Yeah, it's burning my finger. It hurts. After several goes, I started to realise why this game is called Flaming Finger. Mark! Oh! Wow. Ready, set, go. Come on, you bastards. I'm having you. Oh! <laughs> What's going on? My finger's going raw. Here we go. The screen is very resistant, and as a result, after a while of playing, the finger starts to burn. Fuck! My finger's on fire! Oh. Here we go. This one says, like, finger boys. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Come on! That was right on it! I don't think this is actually meant to be possible. And yes, being a redemption game, it's safe to say this is partially rigged. Only due to how the timer speeds up rapidly as you get to the very end of the maze. Thank you, boys, again. Oh, come on! This game's fixed! I was determined to see a level to the end at least once, despite not getting any prizes for my time. But in the end, I gave up. I think I almost gave myself a blister on it, but I don't regret playing it. Come on! Yeah, you bastard! Maybe I'm just glutton for punishment. Or maybe I just wanted to keep hearing those funky beats. Sorry. Right the seconds definitely go down too quick at the last nanosecond. <laughs> You're rigged, Flaming Finger! Disney Quest was chock a block with games I'd never even heard of before, such as this one by Sammy from 2003 called Sports Shooting USA. What makes this game really unique is its light gun that has a lit up reticle inside it that you need to line up with your sight to correctly aim at the targets. It's hard to show in video, but it's amazing how well this works. You really have to be pinpoint accurate, otherwise you'll just miss everything. The game scores you on how close to the center of a target your shots are, but doesn't game over you for failing too many times, thankfully. It's an ingenious and enjoyable light gun game that I wouldn't mind finding again sometime. Sega Race TV is a game I've always wanted to play, but could never find anywhere. That is, until now. This game was broken down when we first visited, which made my heart sink. Uh, oh no, they don't work! Oh. But luckily it was back up and running on our second visit, so I finally got to play Yu Suzuki's last arcade game from 2008, a crazy racing game that feels like a spiritual sequel to Power Drift and so much more. In my first encounter with this game and not knowing when I'd see it again, I sat and played it for quite some time. Ah, oh, shit! This is hard to play and film at the same time, but it's so good! <laughs> this game is everything you could possibly want from a Sega arcade racer. Ridiculous characters with cheesy dialogue, embarrassingly catchy disco and butt rock tunes, beautiful colourful graphics and perfectly tuned drifting controls. This game has a big emphasis on boosting with a big fat boost button that you'll be wanting to smack every time it lights up, so long as it doesn't send you smashing into a wall anyway. <laughs> Courses are wildly creative and full of surprises like a wrecked Statue of Liberty that stabs at the ground and a lava stage that has ramps that fling you into the air spinning. Whoa! Shit! <laughs> Saw that coming. Woo! Wow, well, the first. Nice. I'm glad that I finally got to try out this lost Yu Suzuki gem and still hope for Sega to one day port it to console so I could play it more. Hint, hint. One of the floors is entirely dedicated to retro tiles, with far too many to list off here. A good chunk of classics are represented here, from Arkanoid to Burger Time to Centipede all the way to Zaxxon, though unfortunately no Yuzuzuki games like Hang On or Space Area. Still, what was here was far more than we could even scratch the surface of in just two evenings. I could easily spend an entire day in this place and probably still not play everything. 
Oh blimey, kangaroo, big dog, Mario Bros. <laughs> Jungle hunt, phoenix. Oh god, I'm not playing that again. <laughs> Batman, make tracks. Oh blimey, that's um, I know this game, but I think I know it. It's like Crush Roller. Discs of Tron, Tron. <laughs> Another Fix It Felix Jr. Millipede, Centipede, a uh, a repro uh, Batman machine, but it's got quite a few good games on it, and loads of pinball machines. There are some real rare gems here that you don't often see. Like this one called Trog, a midway game from 1990 in which you play as a clay dinosaur collecting eggs while decking cavemen in the face so they don't eat you. It's a really charming Pac-Man style game that for some reason wasn't ported to many consoles and it's playable with up to four players on this massive cabinet. <laughs> Oh god. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else they got? A blimey karate champ. That's quite unusual. Don't see that every day. This fighting game by Data East from 1984 uses two joysticks and no buttons. It appeared to be stuck on two player mode and Cherry Terry was busy on DDR so I just kind of faffed out with it. <laughs> God, this is a weird game. This is getting on a weird bikini. I don't even know if I'm playing it or not. Oh, now I am. Oh, weird. No oh, points. I'm playing it by myself at the moment. Ooh. I'll kick you. I'll kick you back. Using these weird joystick controls. Pop. Red. Who's turn? I could do a crappy little jump. Oh, I can throw as well. Well, that worked. <laughs> Another oddity was Gorf, a midway game from 1981 that is a lot like Space Invaders, but you can move about more with this big flight stick and has one of the earliest uses of synthesized speech. You can die like a nanosecond after you died the first time. And it's got this crazy explosion. I look like Bohemian Rhapsody, look. <laughs> Alongside the original machines, they also had some multi-game emulation cabs with hundreds of games on them. So even if a favourite of yours is lacking its own cabinet, it's very likely to be found on one of these, such as this underrated classic. Yeah. Yeah, Zookeeper. Fucking game. Time for clacks. It's the year 2014 and there is indeed still time for clacks. Clacks. Oh nice, I can play um, Poochie Chariot with uh, a trackball on this main cabinet. That's pretty sweet. Let's have a look. I've got to play as uh, myself. Uh, anime Gagaman. Oh, okay, then maybe not. I've got blue hair now. Very badly. 
Oh god. Oh no! Playing everything badly tonight. Uh. Jumping Jackpot. Another redemption game by Namco, much like Flaming Finger, is covered in bright colourful LED lights and pumps out electronic beats. But this one is more of an exercise game in a way, and by that I mean it will make you sweat your bollocks off if you play it enough. It's basically a digital skipping rope, where you have to jump over the red line of LEDs as they rotate to the bottom, only you're jumping off a floor pad that is extremely harsh on your timing. You have to jump high and fast from the get-go, and as it gets faster with each successful leap, it becomes next to impossible. Aww, that's a bit harsh. Welcome to Jump, Go, 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 Micro! Wanda! No! There you go. Oh, CL. Yeah, it's just like that other one, isn't it? Welcome. I was determined to get a higher score than just two or three like I'm getting here, and eventually off camera I managed to achieve six, which left me in a panting, wheezy mess. But you know what? I loved it. It's so hard. I don't think I'd want to pay money every time I fail on this, but on free to play here in Disney Quest, it was fun. Knackering, exhausting fun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's so harsh. This is pumping money out of people if it wasn't free to play. That's it. Oh! <laughs> that makes DDR look like yoga. To my surprise, one of the newer games here was an arcade version of one of my favourite mobile phone games, Jetpack Joyride. It's pretty crazy to see this game in a massive noisy cabinet with a jetpack shaped chair containing seizure inducing flashy lights on the back and two triggers for its single button gameplay. The game still plays roughly the same, but the aim has changed. Instead of being about how far you can travel before being hit by something, it's more about how many coins you can grab within a time limit. Hitting obstacles no longer kills you here, instead you lose coins which explode all over the place. I actually kind of wish I could play this version of the game at home, maybe as a new mode in the phone game, as it's even more fast paced and chaotic than the original. There was also a large scale version of another half brick game, Fruit Ninja. Instead of swiping your finger across a small screen, this version requires your entire hand. Swiping across a big screen does seem to lead to some unpleasant squeaky noises though. Uh, uh, moving on. I also played a Sega developed Tetris game with the world's biggest joystick called Tetris Giant and a Super Monkey Ball game with the world's coolest trackball. Look at that! Look at that ball, how glittery it is, Whee! I won this many tickets except it's a free play game so there's no tickets. This speed of light, the game where you have to smack the colour, the lights as much as possible. And there's even a little baby's version called Little Speedy. And of course we just had to play speed of light now didn't we? If you've never seen it before, all you need to do is smack as many of the randomly lit up buttons as possible, with combo scores tallying up for how many you can hit in quick succession. So how did I do on my first go? Here comes the finale, hit all the buttons as fast as you can, and act like a bit of a bell end in my case. I managed to get 274, let's see if Cherry Terrier can beat that. Hit 
all of them. Now. <laughs> wow, that was really good. In the end, she got 163, so not quite. Something tells me having long, lanky arms worked in my favour. Cherry did do a lot better on that final part, though. We also played a two-player round, which splits the game up into two halves of the buttons, making it a little easier to get combos. We couldn't film that, however, as there was only two of us, but rest assured it was a proper laugh. I had another go. Could I beat my previous record? Just about. 285 that time. That game. All in all, Disney Quest has a countless selection of games that are very well looked after, and in the two times we visited, it wasn't so busy that we couldn't possibly get on anything. In fact, there are so many games here, you're pretty spoiled for choice. They even have little notices scattered throughout asking players not to hog machines so others can get a go. So if you're ever on holiday to Walt Disney World in Florida, you should definitely dedicate an evening or two, or three, to this massive, expansive arcade. You'll feel like you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet of games that you play instead of eat. Yeah. Just watch out for this freaky fella. Ooh, that is a big, scary, giant Pinocchio. Ooh. Stacy is a clanger, listen. <laughs> Stacy's a clanger, confirm.